Okay, this is something that uh, I think is an important topic to discuss. Somebody uh, sent me something on, on social media. I get literally thousands and thousands of social media messages a week, so it's hard for me to respond to all of them. But let me just lead this up. You know, somebody asked me the other day, well, I, I pointed out the other day that the leading cause of vegans are stroke, I'm sorry, are heart disease and cancer, stroke being a subset of heart disease. And the data is clear, it comes from the Epic Oxford data, um, shows that uh, uh, vegans are less likely to die of an MI, but slightly more likely to die of cancer, at least in that, that cohort of data. And that's really one of the only cohorts looking at mortality data that we actually have on people, because most people give up veganism and, and they don't stick with it for very long. And so somebody uh, was, you know, and, and you know, up to this point, um, Literally now hundreds of thousands of people have tried a carnivore diet. It's becoming more and more popular over the last several years and continues to get more and more so. And I had one person, actually, well, I, to be fair, there's been a couple of people over the years that said, hey, I had, I started a carnivore diet and then sometime after that something negative happened to me. You know, I had a, I had a medical complication. Um, I'm aware of even a couple of people that have died after starting a carnivore diet. Now, to be fair, they were very, very, very sick individuals. Somebody was like, hey, I'm going to get my parents to start on. My, my dad is on hospice, and he's starting carnivore, and then they subsequently tell me that they eventually died, which, you know, they're already on hospice. It doesn't surprise you. And there is a background rate of uh, disease that occurs regardless. If someone were to ask me, what do you think people on a carnivore diet are going to die of? Well, this, the most realistic answer is heart disease and cancer, the same thing that kills pretty much everyone else. Now, you know, maybe that won't be the case. We don't have enough net data to know that. But if you just, if I had to guess, that's what I would say. Maybe we'll revert back to pre-19, you know, you know, 20th century uh, death where infectious disease and then quote unquote natural causes, which probably is just heart disease anyway, which just wasn't properly diagnosed. But anyway, this is a person who sent me a message on social media complaining that, hey, you know, he actually had a stroke after starting a carnivore diet. And he reached out to various carnivore people, myself and a few others, and, you know, didn't get the response he wanted. I guess he wanted everybody to advertise for the world that this person went on a carnivore diet and had a stroke. And apparently the circumstances, he was drinking lots and lots of coffee and felt he was dehydrated and had a stroke. And, and maybe that had something to do with it, maybe not. It's hard to tell. You know, and if you look at the number of people that have strokes in the United States every year is about 800,000 people. And again, the older you get, the more likely you were. And this person was in sort of, I think, the sort of moderate adult age where it's still fairly common. It's not as common as somebody that would be 70 or 80, but it's still relatively common. And so if we just look at the law of averages, you know, let's say 100,000 people have tried the carnivore diet. If about 800,000 per year out of 300 million, um, you know, would do that's that's about a quarter of a percent. So a quarter of a percentage of people every year across the board have strokes. So a quarter of a percent of a hundred thousand people would be about two hundred and fifty people. So I would expect if a carnivore diet was causative for strokes, then I'd see about two hundred and fifty people would tell me they've had strokes. And that would be just to be the baseline. So the fact that I've only heard it once out of 100,000 people shows me that it's less likely to, to occur. Um, you know, so it's, so it's really it's really one of those hard things to say that just because something happened, you know, you have to look at what the baseline prevalence is and then what the overall, you know, what, what the new prevalence is. And right now it seems like the new prevalence is low for strokes and things like that, you know, despite the fact that someone has it. And someone will have heart disease and someone will have cancer and someone will have all kinds of things. You know, if I were to take 100,000 fly fishermen and say, you know, you all start fly fishing, some of those people are gonna have heart attacks. Some of them are gonna have strokes. Was it the fly fishing that caused it or was it just coincidence? It's hard to say. But anyway, I certainly feel you know bad for anybody that has a, that has a medical problem, but to sort of say that I should warn everybody out there that my God, a carnivore diet is gonna put you up for stroke when reality of the matter is, it doesn't seem to be increasing the rates of that. So um, certainly uh, you're going to die. I mean, we're all going to die. I mean, and the things we know, the things we commonly see, we, we're well aware of. Um, can a carnivore diet raise LDL cholesterol? For some people, yes. We, we're well aware of that. We talk about that all the time. Is there some need for electrolyte supplementation for low-carb diets in general? Yes, that's a very well common talked about um, phenomenon. I've talked about it many, many times. So have many other people. Um, there are, um, 
you know, changes in digestion. Some people have loose stools. Some people have less frequent stools. All these things are common. And when we see them, we talk about them. But this one-off, you know, one in 100,000 person that has a stroke or something like that, you know, it's just kind of like, well, that's maybe just coincidence, probably just coincidence. That's unfortunate. And, you know, not to diminish, diminish it or sort of, you know, sort of ignore this, but I mean, it's, you know, it's a sad thing. And I think that sounds like the person did well afterwards and recovered. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but it seems like they're doing well. Uh, but anyway, it's just something that, you know, uh, you know, life happens. Things are going to happen to you. A carnivore diet is not a uh, ticket for immortality or a prevention for all and every disease. Some things still happen, you know, and that's just part of it. Uh, you know, again, I would encourage you. Now, if it's not working for you, you know, if you're saying, hey, I'm having real problems with this diet, don't do the diet. I've said that over and over and over again, right? So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Are you seeing a higher or lower rate of problems? And the other thing that's interesting, and I didn't point this out, but in the other direction, you know, how many times you see in the general population do you spon spontaneous remission of uh, depression, multiple sclerosis, hypertension, diabetes, those types of things which we know don't typically occur, but yet when we put people on a carnivore diet, we do often see those things. So the incidence is much higher than we would expect on baseline population, whereas the incidence of negative things like strokes and other things are much, much lower. And so, you know, what, what makes the most sense to talk about? The things that are going to be more likely to occur than the standard population or the things that are going to be much less likely to occur in the standard population. Anyway, you guys have a great one. I got to go work out. We'll talk to you soon.